Hi, for this video, what we are going to do is learn how to construct a 90% and a 95% confidence interval using the TI Inspire. Um, the situation that we have here, it tells us that we have 40 randomly selected seawater samples. The mean of that sample um, of sodium chloride concentration was 23 cubic centimeters per cubic meter. And we want to assume the population standard deviation is 6.7 cubic centimeters per cubic meter. And most of the time you're going to be in a situation where you have to figure out which confidence interval do I need to use. And the way to tell is to look for some keywords. The first keyword tells us that we have a single mean. And so since we're trying to find the population mean, um, that tells us that we're either going to use a Z interval or a T interval. And the way that we tell the difference between using a Z interval versus a T interval is we look for whether or not the population standard deviation is known. Remember that this is sigma, and so if you know sigma, then you use the Z interval. So I'm just going to write down really quickly the conditions for using a Z interval. Um, and I would always reference the text that you are using because sometimes these differ slightly by texts. Um, some textbooks don't even cover a Z interval um, because it's not used nearly as often because majority of the time we don't know the population standard deviation. If we knew the population standard deviation, then we would most likely know this um, population mean and we wouldn't need to generate an interval. But because of the fact that sometimes you know the population standard deviation, or you know past from past um, experiments what the population standard deviation is, so you already have an estimate for it, so you can use this one. The conditions that must be met are you have to know sigma, and so since it tells us that the population standard deviation is 6.7, that condition is met. Um, the second one is, is that we have to have a random sample and so for this one, it does tell us in here that they randomly selected seawater samples. And then the last one, remember, in order for the central limit theorem to kick in, our sample size either has to be greater than or equal to 30, or it has to start from a normally distributed population. And because it tells us that our sample size is 40, um, this is met for any type of distribution, so it doesn't matter that this, whether this is normally distributed or not. So since n equals 40 is greater than or equal to 30, that tells us we can use the z interval. It's always important to check your conditions because if your conditions are not met, then you can't actually do that, um, that particular interval. So for the 90% confidence interval, remember that the formula that we are going to use, and let me erase the 90%, um, the formula that your calculator is using is it's going to take your sample mean and it's going to add and subtract the z-score that corresponds to your level of confidence times sigma divided by square root of n. And for some of you looking at this formula, you may not have this one in your textbook. Um, other textbooks use x bar minus e, and they put mean in between. They're saying that the population mean is somewhere in between x bar minus the margin of er error plus x bar plus the margin of error, where the error is found by doing zc times sigma divided by square root of n. This is really just a published or a um, textbook author's preference. Some use z star, some use z c, but they mean the same thing. They're the z score that corresponds to a specific level of confidence. So with this, what we are going to do, like I said, I am going to show you how to do all the work so that you're not just relying on plugging it into the calculator. Um, I know that some people just want to get to the answer, but it's more important to understand what is truly going on. Um, that's when true learning happens is when you know exactly what your calculator is doing. I'm all about using technology to come up with the answer when it's quicker, but I also know what the calculator is doing. So for the 90% confidence interval, if you are trying to figure out um, 
what your critical values are. This is also called a critical value. So Z star or Z C is our critical value for this one. Um, in order to calculate this, what we can do is this area down below here to the left of our negative Z star um, is always going to be one half of one minus the level of confidence. So it doesn't matter what level of confidence you have. Um, so if you don't have a table, I prefer to use tables on this because it's 90%. I would just go here and say that 90% is 1.645 in the Z-score. I used a T-table to find that. Um, the T tables always list the Z scores at the very bottom because over time the T interval actually approaches the Z interval. Um, so that's why I use that. If you're using your calculator to come up with this value, um, you would do inverse norm. And I'm going to show you that right now just so that you guys can see um, where my Z star or Z. So I'm just going to put Z star equals ZC. Those are the same thing depending upon um, your level or your calculator. So I would do one half one minus my level of confidence as a decimal. So in this case, I would do 0.9. I'm just using this right here. If it was 95, I would put 0.95. If it was 0.99%, I'd put 0.99, etc. And then we would do zero and one. And so let me pull up my calculator. I'm just going to open up a calculator screen. Um, and to do this, Remember that we would go to our stats, the menu, statistics, and distributions, and option three is our inverse norm. And I can actually just type in here 0.5, parentheses, one, minus 0.9. Um, that way it'll automatically do the math for me. I could have also found the math, but that's just the shortcut. And then notice I get 1.64485. So your calculator is using more floating points than the table does. So you'll get slightly different answers from your calculator versus doing hand calculations. But it's very, very um, minimal. Um, just keep that in mind. So like I showed you in the table or in the calculator, it's approximately negative 1.645. From the problem, we were given our... Um, the sample statistic, the X bar is our point estimate for the population mean, so that's the 23. The sigma was 6.7 and N was 40. Even if you're using the calculator without showing the work, um, you have to know all of this information to plug into your calculator. So again, I'm just going to use this formula just because it's um, shorter to write out. It doesn't take up as much space. It's the same thing. The plus or minus just separates it out into the two values here. And then we would just plug in our values. So if you need to show the work, this is how you could write down the work. We would do the 23 plus or minus. Then we would plug in the 1.645 that we got either from using inverse norm or the table, whichever one you're more comfortable with. And then we would plug this into our calculator. So I could actually plug this whole thing in, or I could just use the calculator to help me find the interval. So again, for anything in here, we would go to our menu, and I'm going to go to statistics, and this time I'm going to choose option six. And notice under here, these are the different confidence intervals that the formulas are programmed into your calculator. So that's why you have to know which conditions to have and so that you know which one to use. So we know that we need to use a Z interval. And the first thing that will always pop up is, um, do you have the data? That means that you actually have the values, the actual values that you got from your sample. So I would have 40 measurements that I would have to put into a list. I don't have that. We have the stats. So I would select this, and then we just type in our information. So we would plug in 6.7 for the first one. Our X bar was 23. Our sample size was 40. And our level of confidence that we have is 0.9. And then we would just click OK. And when we bring this up, it does tell us our margin of error is 1.7425. So that's within 1.7 um, cubic centimeters per cubic meter of the actual mean or of the, um, sorry, of X bar. So this is what's being added and subtracted to get your lower limit and your upper limit. Um, so your calculator does tell you a lot of information. The interval itself is just the C lower to C upper. So we would just write down um, the 21.25, 
um, eight or seven five, and the upper was twenty four point seven four three approximately. And then remember the interpretation in case you haven't watched my other videos. I do want to make sure that you understand how to interpret. We would say whatever level of confidence. So we would say with 90% confidence. And this is basically just a script that you would fill in. Um, with 90% confidence, the mean sodium chloride con sorry, sodium chloride, Let's see if I can spell and talk at the same time, sodium chloride concentration of seawater is between 21.258 and 24.743 cubic centimeters per cubic meter. So the interpretation, remember that 90% of um, confidence intervals from this population will contain the true population mean. So we're hoping that our interval actually contains the true population mean. Sometimes we miss it completely. Um, in order to make it a little bit more likely for you to actually capture it, you can increase your level of confidence. Um, the other thing that increases uh, your accuracy is your sample size. So if you use a larger sample size, that will also help you. So for the 95%, I'm not gonna go through as much. Um, the Z star or the ZC for this one is 1.96. Every time that you use a 95%, it's 1.96. Um, sometimes you just know this. Um, I'm just going to show you on the table that it is 1.96. The X bar is going to stay the same. The sigma is going to stay the same. And the sample size is going to stay the same. So if the only difference between this is the 1.645. So if I were to plug it into my formula, instead of the 1.645, I would use the 1.96. And then we would write our interval. And for this, you can always go through the menu statistics, all of that information again. You would have to retype in everything on this one. Um, the other option is you can just grab the information from above and then scroll over. If you notice, it says a Z interval. This tells you the population standard deviation, the mean, the sample size, and I wanna change the 90% confidence to 95% confidence. And the only thing that that's going to do is increase the width of my interval. It's going to make it a little bit wider, so I'm more likely to capture it. So I would just put down the 20.9237. And then the upper would be 25.0763. And this would be my confidence interval. And I would just write it the same way. The only thing that would change is I would say with 95% confidence, the mean sodium chloride concentration of seawater is between, and then I would insert these two values in place of here. As always, thanks for watching. Please continue to check out all of the video content that I have. Um, I am continuously updating, and if there's anything that you would like to see, please make sure that you let me know. As always, thanks for watching.